What's up, nerds? Plugged In is back at it again. I'm your host, Christian, along with Tyler. Today, we're discussing the newest poster for Spider-Man No Way Home, the Stranger Things Season 4 teaser, and so much more. Let's roll the intro. Earlier this week, we finally received the first official poster for Spider-Man No Way Home. The poster, as simple as it is, does show and tease some of the movie's villains. The teases we are referring to is a Sandman and Electro, which you can find in the poster's background. However, the exciting part in the poster gives us our first look at Green Goblin. Fans have been quick to point out that it is the Sam Raimi suit, which was to be expected. What are your thoughts on the first poster? I'm really excited that we finally got a poster. I know mm -hmm. fans have been waiting for a long time. I myself have been mm -hmm. waiting a really long time for it. And I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how much they were gonna tease or whatever on the trail or on the poster. Mm -hmm. But we already knew about Doc Ock yeah. being in there from the trailer. But like seeing Green Goblin in there, it's just like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. like it's real, like it's happening. All the villains are coming back. Mm -hmm. And then like you can see the lightning. So yep. It's like the sand and electro, everything. Yeah. And the lightning. So it's like, geez, we really are building mm -hmm. up to the Sinister Six, maybe. I mean, I guess I've really have you seen the fan made posters that like theaters were putting up? Those was are pretty cool. Yeah, there all were all three um, Spider Man. There was that one, I think, and then there was one that um, had Spider Man like wrapped up in Doc Ock's like tentacles. Oh, I did. So see that, that that was pretty cool. I did like that. That was one, a good but one. Yeah. I, honestly, I think the poster does give away enough where it still leaves suspense to us, where it's like, oh, what are Electro and this Sandman going to look like? Is it like the new Electro they're talking about, or could it possibly be? A throwback to like the 80s um like the oh, comic yeah. look with the lightning bolt like mask and everything that'd be really cool that's interesting see i just kind of assumed it meant like mm -hmm. was it, is it jamie fox yeah i thought he would be returning and the other guy who played mm -hmm. sandman yeah from like the their respective Thomas original Hayden ones church or whatever his name yeah was. that guy yeah but do you think we'll get another uh trailer soon or anything I would think so mm -hmm. because the movie literally comes out like I know. in like a, month a month, yeah, from now. So it's got to mm -hmm. be any day now, right? Like they were thinking it was since Ghostbusters is coming out this weekend. That that is a Sony um, IP, so they're thinking that it is going to release along with Ghostbusters Afterlife because that'd be the perfect timing because that is like a month away from the release for No Way Home. Okay, so that's the most plausible situation, or it could just be the beginning of December too. So. I just feel like waiting till December is so mm -hmm. late. I know. It's like the movie's going to be out already. Yeah. Just I don't know why mm -hmm. they're not just releasing it. I did hear that, I think it was Kevin Feige has been fighting with people because, again, big rumor, mm -hmm. but apparently the, I don't know who makes the trailers, but whoever makes the trailers wanted to showcase all three Spider-Man. Oh, no. And no, Kevin no, Feige has no, no, been no, fighting no. them on it and said, no, no don't. Mm -hmm. And I know there's been like the one, I think, Correct me if I'm wrong, but John Cam Campia, like, apparently leaked, like, some stills from the movie, and apparently it was giving it, like, away too much. Oh. So they had to, like, shut that down easily. So, but along the lines with all those villains, do you think that there's too many characters, or do you think it's, like, just the right amount? Because as we saw with Infinity War, like, Ebony Maw, Proxima Midnight, Thanos, all those were technically a lot of villains in the movie, but it worked where it was enough to satisfy us. So do you think that's like the kind of the case with it? Um, my only concern with it is that like in Infinity War, like, yeah, Ebony Maul was in it, mm -hmm. but like no one really cared yeah. about him. Whereas bringing back all the previous villains, like people do really care about like mm -hmm. Doc Ock and like Green Goblin and stuff. So they want to see them yeah. and they want to see them developed. And so I think it's going to be very difficult to include all of them and have like a you know, a smooth, yeah. like, script with, like, that makes sense, but yet also, like, develops everyone. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm excited, but Yeah, I am too. We'll it just, see. It needs to get here now. That December 17th needs to get here now. I know I'll be working during it, but I'm going to try my best to stay away from, like, all the people coming out to theaters and everything. Yeah. So. I'm hoping it doesn't end up like Eternals mm -hmm. where it's a bit cluttered. Yeah. But speaking of Eternals, the Eternals dropped this past Friday, and minus the critic scores, as we discussed last week, the fans have actually been receiving the film well. The audience score on Rotten Tomatoes currently sits at 80%. Have you seen the film? Yes, I saw it uh, the Friday night it came out. I saw it in IMAX. 
beautiful, beautiful movie for IMAX because it gives you that more picture. But Chloe Zhao, she did Nomadland, which was also another beautiful movie. It, she has that, you could see her taste from Nomadland in this movie where you get the beautiful sets from like the Domo, the Mesopotamia, yeah. like all the like flip flopping, like back and forth from all the ages. Like it, it was just a beautifully, it like, was definitely a beautiful movie. movie. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, my only, my only drawback was it like kind of what, how like a lot of the critics were saying is mm -hmm. that there are a lot of characters and like some of them get developed more mm -hmm. than others. And unfortunately, the ones that I wanted to get developed were the ones that were, were the not least, developed. Yeah, were the least developed or didn't get much screen time. In right. It, like, I really liked Cersei. I was mm -hmm. all about her character. She was super cool. Icarus was stupid. He got on my nerves. And then, like, his morals kept changing mm -hmm. where he was like, uh, I'll kill anyone who gets in my way. And then but at I the won't. end, Cersei gets in his way and yep. he's like, I'm not going to kill you, actually. And Because like, I like you what? or whatever. I was like... Pick a lane, buddy. Yeah. And then he killed Ajax, and mm -hmm. I was like, why? Like, <laughs> you're so stupid. And then I noticed this in the credits, but the villain Crow, the one that took Athena at the end. Oh, yeah. It's voiced by Bill Skarsgård. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I know. That's Penny, interesting. Our man Pennywise. I couldn't, I couldn't hear it, to be honest. I was trying to hear it Tuesday night, but I just couldn't get that Bill Skarsgård thing in my head. So. Yeah, I didn't notice that, but that's, that's interesting to mm -hmm. know. But that post credit scene though was amazing. Well, which one? The one with Bane. Okay. And and the ebony sword. Truthfully, I don't know much about. Is it Black Knight? Black Dark Knight, Knight, yeah. So, Black Knight, like he had the sword. I guess the sword is kind of like I read a thing where it's like it's like Molnir, where he can pull it to him, like Molnir, oh. and then like he's kind of like obviously a good guy. But it has like some properties, I think, to it that are kind of like not like any other weapon. Okay. But and then there was that part in the post credit scene where at the end of it, if you heard like the voice in the back, the director did confirm it to be Mahershala Ali's blade. That's I. I don't know what that means, but that sounds it's fancy. It's blade is they're doing a new blade movie. Oh, oh so yes, yes, yes. okay. It, I have Mahershala heard Ali is playing blade this time around uh, against Wesley Snipes' blade. So oh. I was trying to de decipher it, then I looked it up, uh, and it said Mahershala. I was like, oh, my God. Okay. That, that's going to be amazing. That could be interesting. He's going he's gonna to do good. So I hope the best for him for that one. Interesting. Okay. I'll be interested to see yeah. how that plays 100%. out in the MCU. I'm curious to see how the Eternals overall are mm -hmm. going to, like, affect the MCU, mm -hmm. because I wasn't really, like, it just kind of felt like a standalone film. And if you would have removed it from the MCU, I feel like it still would have fit. And I also feel like they're a little bit overpowered mm -hmm. to like be up against some of like our main heroes or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like Icarus, for example, I feel like he could take on a good bit of our yeah. heroes. And he even said he's not strong. He wasn't strong enough to save Cersei if something were happened to her in the end of the movie. I think it was when they were talking about the Unimind. He was like, I w I'm not that powerful enough to save you or whatever. Oh, so yeah. That's kind of disappointing. And, like, bringing the Unimind or mm -hmm. whatever, like, that big yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm not uh, up to date with the terminology. The yeah, yeah, that, the that celestial. Like, I don't yeah. know, just bringing him in, it makes me think, like, it's just odd to think that there's, like, a separate thing going on outside of, like, yeah. the Avengers and all of them. And it's, like, just as big, if not mm -hmm. bigger than, like, Thanos. And they couldn't interfere with it, too. Like, they yeah. couldn't interfere in anything. Just throughout history. But. That also was kind of annoying, too. Mm -hmm. And then, like, that's why I liked Druig's character, mm -hmm. because he was like, I actually want to make a difference and, mm -hmm. like, help people. He's like, I don't want to sit on the sideline and watch. I want to differ myself. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. he was the one that got shot down. Well, not literally, but his yeah. ideas were shot down. Mm -hmm. so that was a bit frustrating. But she ended up mm -hmm. turning it around later on. Yeah. So, which was good. But I think when we return, news on the Disney Plus Percy Jackson series and Stranger Things Season 4. Stick around. Plugged In will be right back after the break. Fans of the Percy Jackson series have been waiting eagerly for information on the new show set to premiere on Disney+. Plus. While it has yet to be casted, it was actually revealed that the show will be directed by none other than James Bobbin, who most recently directed the first Mysterious Benedict Society episode on Disney+. Plus. Filming of the show will tentatively begin in June of 2022. 
After the original Percy Jackson films flop, fans have high hopes that author Rick Riordan will redeem himself with the series and this show. Now, what are you most excited for in the show? I don't really know much about Percy Jackson because I'm not really a reader. Okay. So I, I don't really read books, but I remember reading like half of Lightning Thief. Don't really remember much from it. But like the movies, like I kind of hope they like bring some of like the the fun parts of the movies where like for in Sea of Monsters with the uh, giant mouth in the middle of the oh, sea. Yeah, yeah, the sea monsters. That, yeah, the sea monster. Like if they bring like that kind of like action to the show. Like I th I think it'll it'll be a big hit for those like teens who grew up with Percy Jackson and then they see it on Disney Plus next year. They're like I remember that. Let's watch. Yeah. So I think it'll be a big hit for that. I think it'll be great for existing fans, mm -hmm. but it'll also be great for new fans to like that are now growing up in that age mm -hmm. range of like preteen to teenage, and like can start reading the books for the first yeah. time. Yeah. I think that'll draw in a lot of fans to start reading the books again. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, my biggest hope is that the n the new show kind of does the book justice, mm -hmm. or all the books justice. Because a lot of people complained about the movies while they were good, they were, well, they were good as standalones, but they weren't very representative of the events of the books, mm -hmm. and so people want more accuracy. And I think now that author Rick Riordan is going to have more control over the story, um, I think we're in good hands mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. And so I think that, well, I hope that this show is going to be given a lot of attention mm -hmm. and will be given like very good, I don't know, like CGI and mm -hmm. just, I want yeah. it to be solid, like yeah. like a WandaVision type yeah, quality you want show. Yeah, you want it to show that, that CGI that now has come all these years, that something like Eternals that looks beautiful, this show can kind of almost replicate that uh, beautifulness with their CGI and with all the mythology that they have in the background of that, of those books. And I just hope it does everything justice from what I've been hearing about the from what I've heard about the books yeah I for one yeah. growing up as a huge Percy Jackson mm -hmm. fan I have really high hopes for it and so like I want to see it be like everything I've ever wanted yeah. in like a screen adaptation but we'll see I don't want to put mm -hmm. all my eggs in one basket but another main thing about it is like the casting mm -hmm. which they've started but they haven't either they haven't casted anyone yet or they haven't announced it mm -hmm. yet so they're in the process of auditions as far as I know um, but I think I'm kind of hoping that at least the main characters will be like new kids, like up and coming actors yeah. who haven't been in anything else yet. I think it would be nice to see mm -hmm. someone who's like, you know, that just somebody new, mm -hmm. some fresh yeah. faces. And I want to see some kids that actually look like 12 year yeah. olds. Or look like those like. No, is it high school like the book takes place during? It starts when they're 12 and then it okay. progresses up to like high school age. Mm. So like that start of like 6th six to 7th sixth to grade yeah. like type looking kids. Yeah, um, I don't want to see like grown adults playing 12-year-old yeah. <laughs> Percy yeah. Jackson. Like that's kind of what they did in the movie. And like mm -hmm. it worked because the movie just kind of pretended that they were like in high school. Mm -hmm. But if it's going to be accurate to the books, we need to cast younger kids. And then do you think for the show's sake with the books, do you think it'll be a book per season? If they do it that way or like every like, I don't know how long the show's going to be, like episode wise, but do you think they'll do like a book like every few episodes in a way type? Um, I believe I heard that each season is going to be one whole book. Okay. So since the initial Percy Jackson series had five books, mm -hmm. it'll be five um, seasons. I don't know how the episodes are going to break down, though. I don't know if they're going to go for, like, a short season mm -hmm. of, like, eight episodes or if they'll go longer for, like, 20 and maybe mm -hmm. do, like, an episode a chapter. Like I a, think that might be a lot, yeah. though. Like a Marvel-type situation where they do, like, six or eight episodes for the yeah. season. I'm kind of leaning towards that. And then for the next season. That's what I would hope, to be honest. Because that, that formula that they, that they did is actually worked out very, very well for those shows. So... Because I don't think there's necessarily enough content in e like every individual chapter, but, but we'll see. Be ending on that note, another highly anticipated show, Stranger Things Season 4, has just released its fourth and final teaser trailer. In this teaser, Eleven is reading a letter to Mike through a voiceover while talking about her life in a new school and her excitement to return to Hawkins, Indiana for spring break. It then cuts to a montage of action sequences, such as bullets shooting through windows, soldiers in pursuit, and explosions. With the season being released in 2022, fans are hoping for the official trailer to drop soon. 
What do you think will go down in season four in Hawkins? Ooh, there's a lot going mm -hmm. down. There's a lot to unpack from the teasers, and I think there's a lot more going on than meets the eye. Mm -hmm. So, like, when I think of Stranger Things, I think of, like, the supernatural yeah, element. You think of the upside like down. Like, the dem demogorgon the and all that stuff. The demodogs. Yeah. From season two, I yes. think it was. But then, like, this teaser has just kind of been, it sh more or less showed, like, the human aspect mm -hmm. of it. So, like, they were the, sh the soldiers, and I believe there's going to be, like, Russian involvement somehow. Yeah, because if you, if it was the end of season three, I think it was season, yeah, season, season three, three, that Hopper got, like, got, like, like, transported off to, like, the Russian, like, Russia. Yeah. And if you remember that first trailer, that, that first teaser that dropped, it showed him in Russia. So if they actually go through that and don't can it, that would be pretty amazing to show Hopper's, like, return and everything. Yeah. yeah. I honestly, I don't know what they're going to do with his mm -hmm. character moving forward. Like, I don't know if he's just going to be the bait in order to, like, attract Eleven to, like, mm. go to Russia and then they'll capture her. Or if they're going to, like, somehow brainwash him and turn mm -hmm. him evil and turn him, like, against Eleven. I don't know what they're going to do with that, but no matter what they do, it's going to be interesting. Mm, that, that'd that be cool, to be honest. Like, see, see that twist and, like, oh, we're going to take Eleven, we're going to capture her, turn her against you, and then hope to see what happens and everything, so. Yeah, so I'm just excited to see mm -hmm. the kids return. And yeah. it looks like from that teaser, they're all going to be returning together for spring mm -hmm. break. And you know, every time they unite, something always goes down, mm -hmm. of course. But I and think then, it's... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, finish out, finish out. I was going to say, I just, I'm excited now that they're getting older. I think mm -hmm. they're going to have some more, I don't know, what's the, they're going to be like in more adult action-oriented yeah. scenes. Yeah. So I think they're going to be facing off against more like the human aspect, mm -hmm. um, like the soldiers and whatnot. And I think that's going to put Eleven in some other predicaments now that she is getting older. Mm -hmm. And so like. She is more aware of her situation and like why she's being hunted down and whatnot. Yeah. And then see that relationship with Max and Du no. Dustin. I'm forgetting his name. Lucas. Not Dustin. Lucas, yeah. Yeah. Lu it's been a while since I've watched <laughs> any season. But see that relationship that did happen in season three go towards more in season four and possibly see like a rift in their relationship. Mm. Like kind of see them maybe split apart for a little bit, maybe like an episode or two. And then come back together and be like, I'm sorry, everything happened, yada, yada, yada. I mean, I guess yeah. that kind of happened in season mm -hmm. three, but they definitely ended up together by the end of it. Yeah. But I'm excited to see how, like, their relationship shake yeah. out. Because they are still on the young side, but they're mm -hmm. getting older, like, older teens. I think they're probably in high school by now. Uh, I think they were in high school when season three happened. Are they? I, I wasn't sure so. their exact ages. I don't. But I'm also kind of curious as to what the time jump is going to mm -hmm. be between season three and four. Mm. Because it looks like they've had enough time for Eleven to get established at a new school um, and to have, like, high school kids. Like, normal yeah. problems. High school problems. Yeah. Everything we've experienced. But let them experience it now. Yeah, so. yeah. I also thought it was just interesting in the trailer how um, since Eleven moved with Joyce and Will mm -hmm. and all of them, I guess she and Will are in the same age so, or in the same grade. So I just thought that was kind of funny, mm -hmm. like, I guess they're gonna probably become closer friends now that they're like living together mm -hmm. and they're th they know each other at the new school, so they're not completely alone. So I think that'll be interesting because mm -hmm. those two characters haven't really interacted a whole yeah, lot. Yeah, not opinion. really. Well, after the break, we will be discussing the new Werewolf by Night Marvel project coming to Disney Plus. Stay tuned. Fresh off of Halloween excitement, Marvel has announced. The actor Gail Garcia Bernal, who was also in Old, will be starring in the Disney Plus Halloween special Werewolf by Night, set to premiere next Halloween. Not much is known yet about the plot. However, longtime fans of the comics are excited to see this story unfold on screen. How do you feel about the introdu introduction of werewolves into the MCU? I'm pretty excited. I think that's going to be a really cool idea to add like mm -hmm. a supernatural element to amongst the other things we have in the mcu yeah because we so. i mean i guess morbius is like a vampire mm -hmm. so we're kind of steering towards yeah. more of like a supernatural element i mean we had aliens i guess yeah but i don't know i, I just think that's kind of neat it's it's mm -hmm. a different way like you don't really think of superheroes yeah. as like vampires and werewolves no. and stuff you think of them more like as us but like not gentrified but like more more to a high standard of everything. Yeah. And seeing that they're 
like saving us and that they should be held to a higher pedestal. So that supernatural route is will be very interesting to see with this, like you said. So if, if everything goes well, it should get um, received very well from everyone that's like long with the comic line. So. Yeah, I think it'll be really cool kind of coinciding as like a mm -hmm. Halloween release. I think there's going to be a lot of hype around that because mm -hmm. a lot of people love to like get excited for Halloween yeah. and all the spooky stuff around it. So I think this is going to have a really big turnout mm -hmm. or uh, be like pretty popular yeah. with fans. And like I know I don't know much about the actor himself, but as you said, I've seen yeah. him in the movie Old, so oh. he was a pretty good actor. Yeah. So I'm excited to see him mm -hmm. perform in this show and to bring his acting expertise yeah. into the MCU. And I was doing research on some of the comics, and I believe there were two instances in which mm -hmm. Werewolf by Night was in the comics. There was one back in, like, the 70s, and I think they said it was about, like, a guy who was born a werewolf or something like that, and then he's just been, like, living his life. Mm -hmm. And then I think they said he was facing up against, like, a pharmaceutical company <laughs> or something. And I was like... That sounds eerily, like, old. Yeah. Because like, they kind of yeah. face down a pharmaceutical oh company. Oh, my God. So I just thought that was an yeah. interesting parallel. And I wondered wow. if they had any, like, if that had anything to do with mm -hmm. this casting or anything. I don't know. I don't really know what to expect. Yeah. But just werewolves in the MCU, mm -hmm. like, what could That's go wrong? That's pretty interesting. Exactly. If it, if it flops in a way, it's not, like, theater tight where, every, yeah. where, like, it won't damage Marvel and Disney much. But it'll put them down a little more, but it won't like where you're losing out those millions, maybe even billions of dollars in revenue with it. So, and I think if anything, it's going to open the stage for Disney Plus to mm -hmm. create more shows that are with like lesser known comic yeah. characters and whatnot that maybe don't play like such a huge role to the MCU. But it'll be fun just to have like mm -hmm. little things here and there to yeah. like supplement the main heroes that we're getting content on mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, it'll be a nice change of things, like we said. So. Well, it looks like that's all we have for today's episode. My name is Christian Arcaris. And I'm Tyler Gilmer. Turn in next, tune in next week for another riveting discussion in the world of pop culture. Have a great night, Millersville.